Hi, my name is Bente. I'm the Norris Witch, and I have a very special guest with me today again. This time I am talking to Olivia, the Witch of Wanderlust, whom I probably don't even have to really introduce because uh, everyone knows her probably from my viewers. Um, if you don't, you have definitely been living under a rock. Um, but we will talk about working with death today. And as always, I collected all of your questions, so my viewers' questions, and uh, co made a little nice collection of uh, all of the questions that were asked most often. And uh, we will have a little chat about them today. So, hi, Olivia. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm good. I'm excited to be talking about death as per usual. <laughs> it's one of my favorite topics, so I'm excited to dive into it. It's a good thing you're not over it yet because that would be sad. <laughs> I mean, I have a whole channel about witchy stuff and death and all that stuff because I can't shut up about it. So we'll, we'll, when that day comes, that'll be an interesting day. <laughs> Perfect. So, would you mind uh, introducing yourself a little bit, like where, in case there's someone who actually has been living under a rock, where <laughs> people can find you and maybe give a, like a, a tiny little uh, thing about how you got into witchcraft and working with uh, death, because that's that's something that uh, that's always been asked. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, my I I always tell people I'm sorry that I don't have more of an interesting like story or origin story of how I got into um, practicing, but it was just, you know, I was I was like all the other kids that like to do the mud pies and make potions out in the woods. And um, I always felt like things had energy and meaning. And as you know, I, I grew up as an animist, everything had like a personality to me or had um, some kind of like spirit within it. And then as I got older, I started to realize that my my family's christian faith was definitely not my faith and i started to explore that a little more and uh it just it just, here i am and um <laughs> now working with death that's always also been something that i've done but again like you don't really put a label to it until you kind of understand like oh that's what this is um i've always i've had a lot of experience with death in a, a bunch of different ways um, and I think that that has been one of the most profound, I guess, teachers in my life. So I've just kind of taken it and ran with it and been like, you know what? You've taught me this far and everything's gone pretty well when I listen to this. So we're going to take it and run. Um, and then working with death, I think like I've only had that label and like, been set on that and understanding like this is death work for maybe like four years so i wouldn't say that i'm seasoned um in like knowing what i'm doing <laughs> but from my four years of being on that path and then looking back and kind of understanding that these were lessons from death uh i think it's been kind of a lifelong journey so it has been it has been with you for a long time but you've only uh, started using the label itself mm -hmm. like four years ago yeah that, right. that's that sounds a lot like uh, a lot like me with like Nordic practices and heathenry and stuff it's it comes into your life slowly but mm -hmm. surely and at some point you decide okay I I guess that's what I do <laughs> yeah I mean like it's not something that you just I mean at least for me or for a lot of other practitioners that I talk to any practice that they do most of the time it's something that they've always just naturally done and not really yeah. like noticed that they're doing it that was going to get me on a whole other tangent i was about to i was about to go off but um <laughs> that they you know they don't notice that they're doing it until one day they wake up and they're like oh my god like i've been doing this my whole life it's not usually something that they just are like wake up and it's totally random and it's like all right i'm gonna be a death worker now <laughs> you know and you're like okay <laughs> it's it's little bit of a shift change but yeah yeah today i decide i will go after this label right which like you <laughs> totally could mm. but i feel like that'd be really difficult to do yeah you know and like kind of counter naturally yeah doing. it would be a little bit counterintuitive to like do something that doesn't really align with you to begin with so right yeah definitely yeah 
So, as the first question, I actually uh, decided on something more like philosophical because that was actually a question that was asked a lot. Um, and that was kind of how you define death itself. Like, do you see it as like a, a whole separate entity, like a separate spirit or more of a personification or more of a concept? Like, how do you perceive it? This is a big question. Um, I know. <laughs> so I, I, I think death is definitely just more of like this ethereal energy. I don't really feel like death itself is this cognitive being that is listening to you right mm -hmm. however i do think that there are a lot of spirits and deities that um embody death and really i guess embody is the best word that i can come up with right now but it's so you can you can work with them and communicate with them and they have a deeper understanding of like death as that umbrella term as that you know ethereal energy i suppose whereas mm -hmm. death itself is just that energy whereas there's a lot of like spirits deities entities that you can work with that have this like direct link so i think it's almost like a triangle where like yes you can get lessons and learn and experience death in a lot of ways but then also when you're trying to kind of get I guess more of a communication and like a back and forth with death you do kind of have to go straight to those entities or their spirits or those deities that you work with um in order to have that like back and forth because you can't really have that with like this this ball of energy right or this <laughs> this like feeling um or this concept i suppose so it, it is definitely like a difficult thing to explain but i do think that there are kind of these two different things but it's linked on both sides so it's like a triangle if you're trying to i guess view it that way that that makes a lot of sense though and it, it kind of sounds like uh it would be i don't know with love For example, like you have hmm. like the more of a the concept, the energy of love, but you have specific entities, spirits, deities, animals, plants, whatever that is spirits. Such that. a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, you can be a love witch. And what does that mean? Like you you have a love altar, but that doesn't mean that like love is like a deity itself, right? Or no. like a spirit itself. So that's a fantastic comparison, yes. That's that that makes a lot of sense. I feel like that uh, that view on it will help uh, a lot of people because I felt I felt like some people were uh, a little bit confused by just mm -hmm. the term of like working with death and what that really uh, incorporates. Uh, yeah. So of course, also a question that was asked that was probably the most asked question, and that was like how you personally incorporate death into your practice. Oh my god! Uh, like well, okay, so death is <laughs> death is. I mean, it's everywhere. It's it's in everything. Like you cannot have, I cannot be living without having death. Actually, can I run and I'm gonna grab a book really quick. Mm -hmm. So death, like you have to have it, right? Just like you have to have life. Like there, you can't have light or dark without the other. We've all heard that whole spiel. Oh, it's not even in this book. Damn it, it's in a different <laughs> one. I don't know which one it is. You have to have the, the things that decompose in order to have the things that create, right? Because it's like, if they're not decomposing, the creators have nothing to, there's, there's nothing to grab and like create something of like there's, yeah. there's, it ends the cycle. And so seeing death, like I, I think Marshall talked about this. I was on his podcast recently. Um, and he pointed out, he was like, okay, well, It's kind of like when I wake up in the morning and I look forward to having coffee every morning because I know that that's going to end, right? Like I know I get up in the morning and I'm going to have this coffee and I enjoy it because I know that I'm not going to have it all day mm. or my whole life. Like it's this one cup of coffee for maybe 20 minutes and then I have to continue on without it. And like that would be considered death, right? And like mm. I know that that's such a min like a minute form of putting it compared to what death 
can be because it can be this like very emotional very dramatic thing but it's like that's how death is in our lives every single day and to understand that like every single moment that we have you will never get back so even if like it's it's almost a comforting thing like i've i've dealt with a lot of depression um or like a lot of anxiety and so like when i have the like when i've had like really really bad slumps when i get into this depression this thing that almost starts to pull me out is like you're gonna die soon and i know that sounds like really like not like that sounds like counterintuitive but it was kind of like well you know like whatever like this thing that i'm feeling it's not gonna be forever so even the good things yes they die but the bad things too so it's like when i have like really shitty days or like i have this really shitty thing with my friend and i feel like she's gonna be mad at me forever or whatever like you know like you, you get stuck in it but nothing's permanent including those shitty things and so i kind of like work with death in every single aspect of my life so like eating a really good meal. I'm like, this is really good. I'm gonna set my phone down and I'm gonna like enjoy, like I love these little, the little tiny sun tomatoes. Like those are so fucking good. And I'm gonna like eat those and enjoy that. Um, same thing with my coffee, same thing with my mornings. Like I like getting up in the morning and just like every little thing, it's just, you can romanticize it, but it's also just like appreciating it for how it is now. Mm. Um, which is the small way of how I incorporate death every day is it's very subtle. And again, it's one of those things that you look back and you're like, oh, I've been doing that for a very long time. Um, now in the witchy occult practice side, which that's where I'm sure everybody's like, get to it. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I do work with actual dead things so I like I, I'm very involved in vulture culture and for those of you who don't know what that is it's basically just like finding bones or often finding um already deceased animals and and you know beings and then either like stripping them of flesh if they still have flesh on and like keeping the bones or you can do taxidermy most of the time don't do that with roadkill that's not really a good idea but <laughs> um you know getting the bones and using the the animal parts either in your practice or just kind of like honoring that animal after it's dead so you can like turn it into something beautiful or art or use it in spells whatever um as well as I do work a lot in cemeteries with like the spirits of the dead and the guardians of the cemeteries and uh yeah there it's a lot it's it's a really big diverse practice but in that sense like it I, I don't know how to like go into this smoothly but that's that's kind of it like it's it's a lot of like actual death I have both I mean you can see like my I love I love pinning insects. It's one of my favorite things. It's so mm. meticulous and like really detail oriented and I really like it. Um, and yeah, I don't know, like it's the bones just follow me, it seems. So it's <laughs> it's fun to find them and uh, kind of kind of like do energy work and figure out who they belong to or kind of like what the energy is connected to that. I love I love that. Um, I actually uh, got a lynx skull um, because I'm like very very connected to the the animal and like just connecting to it and uh, connecting to the spirit of the animal that it belonged to and everything uh, was extremely very insightful and very interesting because that was the first time that I actually worked with uh, an animal spirit like directly oh. um, so that was that was amazing so yeah, I, I, I can totally that? relate to that. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I, I think I think like getting the bones. Well, I do think you can still do a lot of animal work and animal spirit work without like the physicality of that animal around you. I, I do think that it's so much easier to connect when you have like a direct source of where that energy can come from, or even like a whisper of what that energy used to be. Yeah. Uh, same thing with like plant magic and things like that. Oh, also gardening. Gardening is a really good way to like connect with death, which I think is kind of ironic, but it's That's interesting. Such, it is such a good way to connect with death. Um, do you want me to go on that platform? I can get up on there. And, okay, <laughs> definitely. I mean, go on because I've never 
actually thought about death and uh, the connection to like gardening. So I think that's extremely interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, like, all right. So now I've got like an actual like full ass yard and that's mm -hmm. so overwhelming. It's exciting. It's just overwhelming. But I've always done like container gardening and you can learn so much. Like I, I've always had very small spaces, so you don't have to have a yard. Like you can have like a balcony or just like a nice window that you set up. But like if you're able to grow some kind of plant that you can like actively work with that it's going to teach you so much and you're i think like gardening is one of the best ways to do death work because you're literally working with like life and death in through like throughout the whole cycle of a plant's life and not even just a plant like especially if you're working outside you're going to see the cycle of like how it affects other beings um, of like the pollinators and like the decomposers or even the pests, you know, like you're going to run into all of these things and it's just so weird. Like you start learning all of these really profound lessons without like sitting down and being like, I'm ready to learn, you know, like you're just trying to grow a plant. But then after you you do it, maybe like once or twice, or you've had this plant for a, a year or two, you've already seen this cycle. And so like you just start to learn as you go and become a little more wise within that. Um, and also like, you know, if you do do outside or like vegetable gardening or something like composting uh, is like a really good way to see how like death works and like seeing everything get decomposed. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like gardening is definitely one of those things that if I were to tell somebody like how to get into death work, especially if they're not comfortable, you know, working with animal parts, which I can completely understand why that's yeah. not something that everybody wants to do. <laughs> um, it, gardening is such a good way because you you see death happen and it teaches you to be okay with it because there's so many things with plants. Like there's not a lot of them are annuals, right? Like they are they're not going to come back next year, but they will make seeds and you can either save the seeds or let them seed themselves. But you like understand like, okay, I'm going to enjoy this flower for however long it's going to bloom and then it's going to die. And that's just how it's going to go. And then I can reseed it, you know, whatever. But uh, you're not trying to like keep this flower alive for everything that you like, you know, like you're not like holding on to it and white knuckling, like you understand that it's going to die. And same thing with like your plants and your fruits and your vegetables or whatever, like you're enjoying what they're giving you in the moment. And then you kind of are like, well, thank you for that. And then they're going to die. And then you start the whole cycle all over again. Um, so you you kind of have like a, a, a first account, like hands-on interaction with both creation and destruction. And you have to kind of accept them for both of like how they are and know that in order to have one, you can't have the other. I just think it's a really good way to get hands on learning with death and life, but especially if you want to do death work. <laughs> yeah, that acts that actually makes a whole lot of sense. Like I don't I don't have a garden or anything. I only have a balcony, but uh, I had to get OK with uh, my plants dying a lot because for some reason they just get pests always all the oh. time and then they die off. Um, so I had to be okay with that. But I also just realized like, yeah, of course. I mean, even if you have like plants and they get pests, you have to be okay with killing those off. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a good teacher for sure. That I, I think that's a that's a great tip because like, yeah, as you already said, there are people who are just not comfortable with like working with bones or like, I mean, with cleaned bones, I mean, more people are comfortable with that. But of course, like collecting roadkill and stuff, that's yeah. not a thing for everyone. And that's, I get it. It's nasty. It can be so nasty. So it's yeah. totally get it. <laughs> I, I'm always a little bit sad that I can't like I can't do that because I mean, I don't have like a yard or anything where I could like bury the animals that I find because like it's very interesting. I've never I never found dead animals just uh, when actually Hel, the, the Nordic goddess of death, started like reaching out to me, then I started finding dead animals whenever she wanted to send me signs. So uh, now I uh, regularly find dead animals and I'm always like, 
I would love to like do something, but like I I can't. <laughs> oh, I mean, if you wanted to do something, I guess I don't think you'd be able to probably keep the bones or remains or anything. But if you really wanted to, you could always take the animal like off the road if that's where you found them, and just like set up like a small little, almost like funeral altar thing for them, like you know flowers around them or just like set them in a way. Um, but again, like you know, wear gloves safety precautions, like all those, just for everybody else. Don't like just be grabbing stuff with your bare hands. Like, don't do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you wanted to, if you feel like called to, you can always do that. And I'm sure that the animal spirit would appreciate that. Um, that's actually a good idea. Like I, I wouldn't be allowed to like bury them because that's actually illegal. Um, really? But I, yeah. For some reason, like you, you're also not allowed to, at least like with bigger animals i don't know what it's like if you find like a dad like tiny little bird or something um but you're definitely not allowed to for example bury your pets in like parks or somewhere um because oh, yeah. of course then everyone would do that and uh right. yeah that makes sense but it's like, interesting like the death laws and the the restrictions and stuff with like everything and how different they are around the world i think those are fascinating oh yeah definitely if, if someone if someone wants to like get some animal bones or body parts and work with them. Please do your research on like where you can find stuff. Yes, that's I, a very I, good decision. I actually realized far too late that it's actually uh, illegal to get lynx skulls here. I mean, it went down, okay, but apparently it's illegal. And I was like, whoops. <laughs> yeah, there's, um, it, it, here in the US, there's a Migratory Bird Act that was like from 1917 or something like that. So pretty much any bird remains that you find you you can't keep and it's actually like technically it's a felony to wow to, yeah like it's it's like it's kind of like a little dramatic for hmm. what it is and i totally understand like endangered species and birds of prey um but even something like a magpie or a pigeon like that you're not technically allowed to own any parts of these animals um but again it differs from a lot of states and like you you really have to like dig um and that and also you know like i have feathers of crows and I'm, i know that other people do like yeah i, I don't mean, think the feds are gonna be like knocking on my door and be like you have feathers and like <laughs> you know i mean and hey if i just like drop off the internet i guess you know what happened but like <laughs> I doubt that I'm sure that they have bigger problems than yeah. me having a couple feathers, you know, something like that. But obviously I'm not going to go out of my way to like collect roadkill from this bird that I know is like illegal to be collecting. So definitely do your research because you don't know what animal remains that you could be. And also, you know, like prairie dogs, we have so many prairie dogs out here and I have processed them, but you have to be extra careful with them because they're known to like carry rabies. So you oh, have yeah. to be like really careful with specific animals, um, definitely, because you just you just don't know. So you just want to be very sterile. <laughs> yeah, that would definitely be the the same thing here with foxes. Like we don't have like a lot of like wild canines or cats or anything because it's just there are not that many wild animals anymore, sadly, in Germany. But like foxes, be careful if you find one. I mean, it's rare, I think. Like, what you mostly find is, like, maybe birds or, like, deer or something. But if you find a fox, yeah, same applies yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're both just like, be careful, please, don't be nasty. <laughs> <laughs> please, please don't catch anything. Just... Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, another question, which I found very, very interesting. Like, I, I feel like... Uh, I mean, I, I uh, don't tell people who I will interview. It's always a surprise. So people didn't know that it will be you that I will be talking to. Uh, so <laughs> I guess people just assumed that I would uh, interview someone else who is like into like the Nordic stuff or is also heathen or something because like mm. everyone was like asking questions about hell, which was very, very interesting. Um, but uh, apart from that, there were also other questions like, do you maybe work with any deities that are death related? Uh, and if yes, then which ones? So I don't work with deities. Um, I have worked with a single deity and it was just for um, like a course that I was taking. 
and it was like an eight month, nine month, I don't know, it was long as fuck, a <laughs> long course that works specifically with Hecate. And so I don't really work with her anymore. I still have her statue and give her offerings and venerate her sometimes, but I don't like actively work with her. But otherwise, like, no, I don't really work with any deities. It's just, just like the encompassing death and spirits from like cemeteries and, you know, local spirits. It's not really any, any big deities. I don't know. I feel like they're hard to, to reach. I'm a local, I'm a local kind of practitioner. Um, the way I like to describe it is locals are kind of like interacting with your neighbors and, you know, like your city council, I guess, if you're trying to like, you know, change things in the neighborhood. Whereas working with deities almost feels like trying to like write a letter to the Supreme Court and hope that they answer. I don't know, like that's how it feels for me. It makes um, a lot of sense, yeah. <laughs> but I also don't, I, like I, other than working with Hecate, like I also don't ever work with deities. So my experience is so small compared to like other people who do do deity work. Mm. Um, but that's just how it personally feels. So I, I'm like a, I'm a local worker. I like my local people. I like my, my local spirits, my community, but, uh, the higher ups, I'm kind of like, man, they, they got enough work to do. <laughs> <laughs> they have enough people reaching out. Hmm. I, I kind of love that you don't work with deities because I feel like everyone does kind of mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I don't know when it started, but I feel like a few years ago it became like a, a thing that everyone suddenly wanted to work with deities and i mean i'm yeah. i mean me too so i get it but <laughs> it's you know i think i have a couple theories i think first of all i mean the internet is very persuasive so if that's like the new thing that's a new thing and everybody's like oh i should do that because you know wicca was like when when the internet like first you know, came out and whatever came out. God, that really aged me, didn't it? Um, <laughs> uh, when the internet first, you know, started becoming like a source of information, like Wicca was the thing. And so like everybody who is online that was practicing, a lot of the time they were either Wiccan or I, I guess like Druid as well. There was very like European centric, um, earth based and like ceremonially. And then we started moving towards this weird shift like like almost hoodoo but not i don't know how to you know like i don't know if you saw that where it was like wicca and then like all of a sudden it was like poppets and jar spells and like hot foot powder yeah. like you know like it was all this and i was like that's i mean okay you know like it's like and there was like that shift and now it's like deities and i think there's now a shift back into folk practice oh, so definitely. It's, it's really interesting to see it like all the trends you know yeah. um which is cool because then people are like getting to learn all these different uh practices but either way the the deity work it is very persuasive like i you know i, I think it's also so many of us practitioners come from a very christian background and it's almost more comfortable to hop into another spiritual practice that has like a higher being that you can kind of like be like hey can you help me out because to just jump in and be like all right everything's on you now like that's a lot of you know that's a lot to be like oh so it's all my responsibility of like what i do and i'm not saying like people are doing it to take away their responsibility but i i am saying that it is easier to almost have some like a, a an entity that you feel like is guiding you and helping you compared yeah. to just being like you're on your own Right. And being raised and especially like socialized to have this like, like a God, you know, of some sort to just erase that completely is very uncomfortable. So I think that might be why, why deities are such a big fad now. Um, but again, like it, it's also kind of helpful because there's so many deities that it kind of is forcing people to learn about different cultures and practices and magic and um so i don't see it as a bad thing yeah yeah i don't see it as a bad thing it's just more of like i, I that's my theory of why i think so many people are like deities 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 and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> nah thanks <laughs> i i think i have a issue with authority maybe that's why <laughs> i don't know
<laughs> but I I I, uh, I get it because like for the for the longest time I like didn't even really believe that deities existed. Mm. So uh, and then hell was like yeah. Actually, actually, I think <laughs> the, the first one who actually came uh, came around was uh, Odin, who was like I mean he's he he likes to he likes to convert people. <laughs> I bet that was interesting, huh? It was intense. I, like Odin that's what I hear. is. Who? That's what I hear. Every every person that has ever like worked with or even just like interacted with Odin, it's always like, yeah, it was some, um, it was a lot. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I mean, he pushes you to learn like a lot of new things, but he's not someone to just be like, I will give you an offering from time to time and just be like. La, la, la. Yeah, yeah. It's, like it's if scary. if he wants something from you, you better do it. <laughs> That's how Hecate was for sure. Like I I like to describe my relationship with her as like anytime I do interact with her now, it kind of feels like going back to like a college campus and seeing that one professor that like kicked your ass, but you learned so much and like you kind of have to like acknowledge that they did push you to become the person that you are now, you know, or like in <laughs> in like whatever field you were studying and so like you see them and like by no means were you friends but they were you know they were very much like you're like stop fucking around like get up and do it and you were like okay you know like it's so okay. <laughs> that's kind of how i describe it of like you go back on campus and every time i like give an offering she's like hi and i'm like hello <laughs> you can have that she's like Thanks. How have you been? And I'm like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That, that kind of sounds a lot like if you if you would fuse like Odin and Freya because Freya is like the she's like badass. Like people always see her as like this nice little love goddess, but like she's badass. Like she will kick your ass if you fuck up. <laughs> if you fuck up, That's you will I, know. <laughs> I've always been this is one of the things. I know this is like a little off topic, but I love speaking to people who are like deity centric and like people who have been in this practice for a long time type of thing, you know, and like who have, who have like a very fleshed out and deep relationship with like specific deities. And I find it really interesting because it it, it is this thing of like, when I was working with Hecate, um, you know, I, I heard a lot of things, I read a lot of things. And now it's like so blaringly obvious to me, like who has like had this practice with Hecate and who is like, I don't know, like trying, like, I don't know how to, like, I don't want to say like faking it. Cause that's not what it is. It's more of just like, they're not getting the full deity, if that makes sense. Or like, maybe they're not even like getting the deity. I don't know. Cause again, I'm not a deity worker. I don't know. But when I was working with Hecate and the things that I was hearing, they were very different things. But when I was working with Hecate and the things I was hearing from people who have been devoted to her for years and are like very, very intense with her, those were the people that I was like, oh, yeah, that's the same experience that I had. Because <laughs> again, my relationship with her is not like soft and fluffy and lovey. Mm. There was a lot of things that were going around that like were watering her down at least in, in my per, in my perspective she, like they're like oh she's a very motherly like energy and i get that but it's like mean mommy like she's not like come here honey like let me like she was like yeah cry get all of it out like whatever but get up i'm gonna teach you something you know like it's not it's not like this like oh i feel so warm and cared for like it's not that it's like yeah cry it out get all your human shit out and then get up and we're gonna keep going and like it's it's like motivated but it's not it's not like nice you know like it's not mm -hmm. warm and so when people are like yeah like hecate is just the sweetest and so kind and loving and like understanding and i was like that was not my experience she kicked my ass and then laughed at me like you know like it was like something like that and so i was like no um so it's just interesting to like hear people who have who are just now getting into it or maybe have like a very light practice which like that's fine but yeah. then compared to the people who are like in it, like balls deep and they're like, this shit is so much. And you know, like it, they're always so stressed, but it's like, 
Yeah. It's so funny to see that stark difference within that, I think, with practitioners. Um, so I love hearing about like the in-depth uh, interactions that people have with their deities, especially the closer that they are, because it just gets like out of hand sometimes. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But definitely it's it's uh, the most fun when you realize that, oh, my UPG actually is SPG now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like verified in a lot of ways. You're like, oh, OK. Yeah. So but that was my my whole tangent, my whole. Yeah. We, we, we went uh, on a little deity work tangent yeah. together. <laughs> <laughs> that is totally fine. People love hearing about that. So <laughs> okay, great. So you touched on it a little bit already, but uh, what would you say is like the most rewarding and important aspect of working with death for you? Uh, definitely the fact that I feel like I live my life. I, you know, like... <laughs> that makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> I I always tell people I'm like you know who like the true not again not to like deviate from other people's practice but like the true practitioners are of death mm -hmm. is because they're usually the ones that are like so full of life you know like a lot of the death the death practitioners that I know are not like always wearing black and super gloomy and like you know like just like woe is me like they're not like that. They are very much like, I'm going to go travel. I'm going to try all the new foods. I want to speak all the languages. I want to, I want to talk to new people. I want to try all the new things. Like it's, it's very much of like, this coffee is going to end at some point. So I'm going to enjoy it, you know? And, um, that's been like the most rewarding for sure, because I've met so many people and that, and also it, it's a very good teacher of just like bahalana, which is just like a term of saying like, just let it be. So kind of going back to the gardening thing of like, you just understand that things are gonna end. Like I had a 12 year relationship end um, years ago and I I wasn't upset. Like, I mean, like, yeah, of course I was kind of like, that's kind of sad because we had a really good, we had really good experiences and you know, I really enjoyed it for what it was. But I also understand that death is a transformation. It's a it's a shift, right? So like I I can't get what I had in those last 12 years with the person that I am and the person that they are now. And mm -hmm. that's okay. It's just yeah. like it was just a bahalana. Like, you know, it, I I loved my relationship with this person prior. And now it's just different. Or like maybe I don't have one. And that's that's okay. Um, so like things like that of when when the tower comes up or when death card comes up, you know, people were always like, oh no, what's gonna happen? And I'm like putting on my fucking cowboy hat and I'm like, let's go, you know, I'm like, I'm like do it again. Like, it's like, uh, but that shift is so, it's so important. And um, when you get comfortable in that chaos, it's almost like the, the riding the waves is so much less like you're fighting them and like drowning. It's just kind of like you're, now it's like a fun little, <laughs> you know, and sure you'll dip under a couple times, but not, you, you kind of get the, the vibe now. Now you're just going with the flow and it's nice. So I think that's been the, the most rewarding is that I just feel like my life is so much more enriched because of it. It's, it also sounds like it gives you a lot of peace in some way because you realize like, okay, something's ending, but I don't have to be like extremely anxious about it or like have like big drama about it because that's just what happens sometimes mm -hmm. yeah and i mean even with things like i mean i'm a content creator i'm sure you know that people are gonna talk shit like just cuz or you know like even people that are you're right, like for no reason and like i think i see a lot of other creators in in all aspects and all different niches that they kind of try to fight it of like, I would never say something like that. And it's like, Bahalana. Hmm. What are they, you know, like if, if you're not doing the things that they're saying that you're doing, I'm not gonna spend my, like my time is that coffee in the morning, right? Like my time is not going to be wasted sitting here on Instagram, trying to prove to people who I am because at the end of the day, I am gonna be what they, I am to them that I'm not, it doesn't matter yeah. so like i'm not gonna waste my time because i have so many other things that i want to do that are actually going to enrich my life instead of me like trying to fight to like save my name to some people that i don't even 
know or that are now changing to maybe not be as close to me anymore you know whatever it is so it it, it does it does give you a lot of peace like the deeper you get into it it's just more of like you understand like when to let something die you know mm. yeah that sounds like a very uh a very very important lesson to learn for yeah people. i definitely think so and it's not an easy one and i'm still learning it but mm. yeah all right so uh if someone i mean i guess a lot of people who will watch this interview will be people who are also interested in getting into the work with death um is there some advice that you would give to someone who's like just starting out yeah i mean so i guess first figure out what you're comfortable with because again like i said there's a huge umbrella of what death work is and can be so you can be a gardener and be doing a lot of death work you can be somebody who frequently visits cemeteries and learning like the local lore and um you know the people who came before you in that city or in the area um working with cemetery spirits whether that's the spirits of the dead or the guardians or like any other spirits that reside there um or you can be working with like a, a deity of death you know if that's mm -hmm. that's kind of your vibe but i definitely think like figuring out where death work works into your current practice is a good start if you have a current practice if not just you know pick which one calls to you the most and just like dip your toe and you don't have to go like full throttle head in first <laughs> you could but that might be a lot um so yeah like my advice is more of that and then also learn about death like as a physical act like learn so i mean everybody knows um i say everybody knows and then i forget the channel name ask a mortician oh, everybody yeah. knows that channel. <laughs> fantastic channel and it's like i think death should be it should be normalized i'm not like and that, again sounds strange but like it it should be normalized like it should be talked about more especially if you're here in the west like we try to hide it and pretend that death doesn't happen for some reason oh yeah and being able to like understand that everything and everyone dies and making that a positive instead of a negative right like mm. yes there are negative things and that that's that's going to happen but like instead of being like oh everybody's gonna die so nothing matters it should be everybody's gonna die so like nothing matters you know yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> you know like that ah, is so, like kind of that thing of like trying to really really work in um i know that this should probably end on me giving recommendations but i do think i don't even know where this fucking book is <laughs> uh, uh but if you want to get into death work and becoming comfortable with death work at, walking the twilight path is by far one of the best books because there are a lot of exercises in here and like journaling prompts that really really dig deep and like try to get you to understand where your views on death are right now and then how you want to shift them that's up to you um but it's like really becoming comfortable with the idea of that you are going to die uh and i think that's i think that's a really important thing to learn especially if you're doing death work like that that's a weird thing not to learn if you're not doing death work or if you are doing death work yeah so that would be my advice is try to get into it somehow integrate it into your life and then if you can pick this book up because it is so damn good and has a lot of really good exercises a new book for my to to be read list yeah <laughs> Just, just add it onto the pile. <laughs> <laughs> But that's, yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's also uh, definitely sounds like exercises that I should do. <laughs> They're intense though. So like, it's, it's definitely a book that it's not one that you can really, I mean, you can sit down and just like read it. But if you wanted to actually do all of the exercises, like it might take you a year or two or more. Wow. Because you really have to like like it you ha you do have to take some time to kind of like recollect yourself after mm -hmm. some of the exercises and meditations because some of them are really intense like if you actually do them it's like you kind of get up and you're like that was a lot and i'm gonna take like a week at least to just like 
chill like you have to plan it right like there's mm -hmm. some that you can't do you're like oh i'm just gonna do this for the dark moon and then i have a really busy week after that like don't do that <laughs> you need to make sure that you have like some time to rest and like chill after some of these because they're intense mm, and you probably don't want to do them like superficially because i mean then you probably don't learn anything right yeah like it it'd be really hard to do these superficially um but i i definitely agree of like if you're just kind of half-assing it there's not really any point to do them anyway mm, yeah so yeah that's awesome an awesome uh recommendation uh, thank you a very very interesting question that i got like i think i only got it once but i, th I thought it was so interesting that i uh thought okay i will i will definitely add it to the interview um do you think like i bet that will differ from person to person but um are there any like specific ethics for someone who wants to work with death mm. yeah i think that's gonna completely depend on the person and also the person's practice because there might be somebody who's like a death doula mm -hmm. right like who like help like works with people actually dying compared to somebody like me who's like in debt like in a um, vulture culture mm -hmm. and even in vulture culture like i think there's a lot of different ethics like i i know that um a lot of people are very uncomfortable with collecting bones because they don't want to like piss off a spirit or whatever but it's like again it's it's a, a lot of the intention of like if you're just picking up the bones and then you're like i i don't know like i don't i can't really like think of something or somebody who's gonna like pick up this animal and just like you know whip it around like it's like you're not i doubt that you're going to do that right like yeah for the most part and just like completely disrespect this animal even people who like don't work with death whatsoever like not witchy not vulture culture like if they're just moving it off the road like that in itself is kind of an act of like oh well, i just don't want you to get hit again you know or just like mm. just moving it like it's an, a, a respectful thing so I think it's like ethics of that as well as mm, witchy wise like for example there are at least in the vulture culture um and in cemeteries like cemetery spirits of the dead or uh guardians communication with these spirits is so important because they're just like when you meet people there's going to be spirits that you just don't click with and if they don't want to work with you for the most part, the worst thing that's ever going to happen is, like, your manifest is just going to, like, it's just not mm. going to, you know, it's just going to fizzle. It's not really going to, like, backfire or do all these, you know, crazy fear-mongering things that you see on the internet all the time. Um, however, it definitely could if that spirit is just really pissed off and doesn't care. Like, I don't know. Um, rare, but it could. So I think, like, that ethic is being sure that whatever animal that you're working with or spirit that you're working with wants to work with you um we oh, see yeah. this a lot in a lot of animal workings like right now i'm seeing a lot of like the native american um community talking about how coyote it's so sacred to them so mm -hmm. it's very kind of like frustrating to see practitioners who are not native american or like are learning from native american shamans like you know in it are just like picking up coyote bones and being like i'm gonna use coyote and whatever and it's like you know, like, you're not really communicating with that spirit. You're just, you just have this association of, oh, coyote's a trickster spirit, so I'm going to throw this in a bag. And it's like, mm. that's not, you know, like, how would you feel if somebody was like, oh, well, I know this person for um, how well they draw. So, like, I'm just going to be like, hey, draw me something. Like, that's <laughs> that's kind of rude, right? Like, if yeah. you're just being like, hey, draw me, and you're not paying them. You're like, there's no offerings. There's no relationship. So those ethics are definitely that and same thing with like graveyard dirt i know graveyard dirt is all the fucking fate like you know dirt in general is great so not just graveyard mm -hmm. dirt but it's like you are you're taking something from someone especially if you're taking it from a grave um if you're taking it from the cemetery itself there are guardians that are watching you so like you're not just you need to be taking it for a very specific intention you need to make sure that you're giving your offerings you need to make sure that the spirits are okay with it because again like i said it's probably just gonna fizzle but if it doesn't you do you really want to test that you know like you just, you're like i don't know when i'm when i'm dead and i want people to work with me as a spirit like 
I might just be having a bad day. I don't know. Like, and somebody just grabs my graveyard dirt without asking and leaves, I'd be like, you know what? Fuck you in particular. Like, I might. I'm a spirit. I have all the time in the world. So, like, yeah. <laughs> But I think those are the only ethics that can come to mind at the moment. Um, otherwise, it's just going to differ from the person's practice and the person themselves. Mm, but they definitely make so much sense. But it's it's funny that you that you mentioned if you want to work with bones, then make sure that the spirit wants to work with you. Because like I I actually got uh, talus bones that are supposedly from cats. Uh, because the person I got them from found them uh, on a walk. So I don't know for sure, but uh, the person said they're most probably from cats. And it seems like a cat's bird because they just, they, no. Nope. No. <laughs> no. That, just I no. don't want to. Don't touch me. Yeah. yeah exactly that. So, it, I mean, it, it happens. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely important to be communicating or at least have some sort of like energy sense and that's a really good way to practice it, but also I don't think that you should be like trying to put it into your magic when you're still figuring out how to even communicate. Like that's a little yeah. that's a little iffy, I think. But hey, you do you, you know? Like I always tell people fuck around and find out and you will find out. So hmm. whatever works for you. Another very, very interesting topic. I think we touched about it like a tiny little bit already. Uh, because of course, like, at least here in the West, death is such a taboo. Like, we already talked about it being such a taboo and that people don't want to think about it. Um, but is it, like, was there uh, something, like, were, like, people uh, reacting, like, weirdly to you working with death or something? Like, did you have uh, any negative experiences because you work with death? Um, for the most part, no, just because really the only people I talk to about it are other practitioners. So they kind of already have like an idea of what I mean when I say death. I'm not saying like, you know, I'm like grave robbing, you know, like I'm not <laughs> like if you're not a practitioner, I think it's a little more of an, a, a nuanced, like, I don't know what you're talking about type of thing. Um, but The only, I guess, like, negative reactions are people who, again, like, kind of stereotype and, like, assume that I'm gonna be, like, you know, like, oh, well, you're not, like, Edgar Allan Poe, just, like, woe is me, always black. Which, like, don't get me wrong, I love the aesthetic, love the mood, but it's, you know, I think it's, it's kind of, like, strange to be, or, like, goth, you know, like, oh, well, I thought, like, necromancers were all goth or something like that like i guess i suppose uh that's like the only negative thing but even so like i wouldn't even say that that's like a bad thing it's just more of like no that's not really what i do and then you kind of have to start from square one and explain like everything if they really want to know um but i guess i do get some people who get really upset that i work with animal parts um because you know again like especially within the occult or like I wouldn't even say a cult realm, I guess, like, new agey spaces. Um, it's very taboo, so, like, it's very, like, vegan and very... Mm. There's, like, this weird, like, earth-friendly, but take nothing from the earth. And it's, like, how... You know, you know, like, it, it's, it's a weird dichotomy that I, I find really interesting that, um, you know, people... So, like, people who get upset if I work with... Um, dead animals or like you know that i'm not vegan or things like that it's like that's the only negative thing of like oh well so you just like work with their bones like it's nothing or something i don't know like if that's not vegan and like that's like that the thing that gets them upset but otherwise like no those those are the only things that i ever have like interactions with that i'm kind of like meh don't love that's, it but <laughs> that's not too bad <laughs> no not at all that's yeah that's not, like that's nothing so yeah. For some for some reason, I expected it to be more, but I mean that's great. <laughs> I'm happy <Yeah>. for you. <laughs> I think most of the time, like people just don't really understand what I'm saying in the first. Like if I'm like, oh, I work mm. with death, like they have no idea even what that. Like they don't even have like a concept of like what to even fantasize of like what that even means. Mm. So it's kind of like okay, you know, like they like they don't really know what to say <laughs> to that. Um, but like. <laughs> Otherwise, it's, yeah, it's really not that bad. So I'm not, I'm going to take it. That's good. I hope that stays that way. <laughs> Me too. 
uh do you uh know like maybe maybe um you have some advice if someone wants to specifically start working with death to kind of deal with grief mm. that's a good question uh so i think first of all a, a small warning to heed is don't like intellectualize your grief so much in like a spiritual sense in order to almost like cope with it does that make sense mm -hmm. so like yeah like feel your grief and yeah. understand that like loss is never easy especially when it's something that you or somebody that you loved like there's no way to get around that um and i think just the fact that like it's such a big feeling it's really hard it's really hard to deal with it you know and so like to get into death work in order to cope um, I think it's a good thing in a sense, but you do just have to be careful about almost like bypassing yourself using that. However, um, death work for grief, I mean, it's a really good way to start understanding that death is, it's, it's just a massive change. And while that doesn't like dilute the fact that you may have lost somebody, um, and I'm not saying like, it's just a change. Like they're going on to the other. No, like I, that sucks. And that's going to suck. But like it is, you know, it's a change of how you're going to be able to interact with that person. Like you can still interact with them by like speaking out, you know, like you can still have that intention as well as death changes things. So like not just like obviously you losing that person, but like the way that you perceive the world and your relationships and yourself and your spirituality and your beliefs, all of those things are going to change drastically when you lose somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and it, like understanding that death is not just from point A to point B, it's literally the in-between of the point A and the point B. So like understanding that it's this, instead of getting from here to here, um, I think would help just because you're not expect like there's no expectations in grief right like there's no right or wrong way to handle it as long as you're not like hurting yourself or other people but the the shift of how you live your life of how you see things of how you treat people how you treat yourself um that is going to be a big part of your death work if you're using it in like a form of almost understanding and exploring your grief that would probably be my biggest form of advice um so and also like don't dive so deep that it keeps triggering you you know like you're allowed to you're allowed to just be a sad person <laughs> and like <laughs> be angry about it or be how you are and then like go out and live your human life like i think trying to because again it's that wording of like pulling yourself completely out of your human and then just living in the spiritual like that can be mm. damaging too so remembering that like again everything is temporary like live your life also and even if that's living in grief for a little bit like you're going to have yeah. to do that when you lose things um yeah losing is never easy grief is never easy but i do think that it can be very helpful to work with death in that sense if you if you can navigate it definitely yeah something that actually came for me from from working with hell which i personally didn't really plan on on like having any connection to a death related deity um because i mean okay odin and freya also have connections to death but i don't like work with those aspects of them that much um, right. but something that really helped me when i um started working with hell was to realize like yeah okay like for example for me it was my grandparents yes they might have moved on to somewhere else but that doesn't mean that they're like necessarily completely out of my life because I can reach them through ancestor phone, um, which that that was something that really helped me. Yeah, I love ancestor phone. I love <laughs> that that term. I've never heard that, and I'm going to use that. Now. It's cute. That's great. Um, yeah, I mean, like my oh, so this is like my own belief. So you know, obviously people are going to believe things differently, but my personal belief of like when death happens, it's not that like that person or that soul or whatever you want to call it just goes somewhere else mm -hmm. right like it 
kind of like the decomposers and the creators like you have to decompose in order to create so this decomposer which is like when you lose something right that energy of the the person like obviously the physical stays but the energy of this person the soul or whatever you want to call it goes back into the pool of like all the other things that have yet to be cycled back into the creation mm -hmm. so like death breaks down all these energies puts it into the pool and then the creator or not like the creator but like the creators um whether that's whatever you want to believe it is it it's just pulling from this pool of all these different energies so like i like to kind of believe that when i lose something or someone that energy goes into this pool and it's created so maybe it like that there's a percentage of this energy that is back into a plant that i'm growing or you know like it's it's in the trees or it's in like everything is connected in my philosophy mm -hmm. so like i can like you said i can reach my ancestors but it's because they're they're in this ecosystem of energy that is our universe so like you know like i'm i'm still i am them i'm still connected to them of course i can reach them um same thing with like the the friends that i lose yeah. like physically like death wise you know like <laughs> i still can have them there because they're not gone they're just you know in a completely different form that i have no idea how to communicate effectively with as a person mm -hmm. um but yeah like everything is everything is there you can connect with everything and everyone so that's my own personal philosophy and i hope that maybe that might help somebody if they're they are grieving mm. um to feel like it's less of it's just this severed connection of like you will never get this person back it's more of like you just have them in a completely different form that it's really hard to communicate with them you know <laughs> yeah. but yeah that's my own personal philosophy so i like that you brought that up of like you know, ancestor I love that so much. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I also love the view of like, I don't know, 2% of grandma is now in this new dandelion that's growing in spring or something. Yeah, yeah. I need to like come up with like a visual aspect and to explain it. Because I like, like, it's almost like if I had like four yellow ping pong balls, you know, and then like you have like five, like four purple ping pong balls, and then we have a pool of balls and then like you and I die we're just gonna put our our ping pong balls in there and then somebody else at random just grabs the ping pong balls so I mean maybe whatever they like accumulate it's three of your purple and then one of my yellow mm -hmm. and then like four of like a green and a blue but it's like you don't know where those came from it's just like everything and I just think that it's like a full cycle I don't think that anything actually is ever like completely gone right so mm -hmm. Yeah, I I like that philosophy. It comforts me and I think that it's it also like feeds my sciency soul as well. So, um, you know, it's just like a big a big ecosystem. I okay. I like that view. And you actually <laughs> you actually finally answered the 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 next question because that was oh. actually about what you think of the afterlife. So, <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, I don't I guess I guess that would be I don't know if that considers or is considered an afterlife, but I, I guess so. Like it's it's afterlife, right? Like yeah. it's, just... <laughs> it's after yeah. after one life and before the next. Into the next, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I don't know what teacher or like mentor I heard this from, but somebody was like, I'm really afraid of dying. Like what would I what would you say? And they said, Well, do you like I don't I'm afraid of like what happens after. And he was like, Well, do you remember what happened before you were born? Hmm. And I was like, that's such an interesting way to think. Like, you know, like completely just flipping it of like, yeah. no. And he was like, well, before you were born, did it hurt? <laughs> And I was like, huh. Yeah. Like hmm. you don't, you don't remember that, you know? And so it's like, I think, I think that was like a really cool way of like, okay, that's right. Like, I don't really. I was just kind of like in the ether, right? Like, mm. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it just popped out and was a person. Like, I don't know how that happened, but. <laughs> that's a whole other mystery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a whole other philosophy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like, uh, now I have to find a like life worker for another video. <laughs> I know. I wonder, I wonder if that's, 
I don't know. Like some a life worker, like a light worker is different. Mm. I don't know. I guess you could talk to Gabby Hairstick. That's she's not a life worker, but she she definitely works a lot in sex magic. So I feel like that's as close as you can get to 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 the creation. (laughs) The (laughs) pre-stick. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I would love it if some if some people now would would want to like label themselves life witches because that would yeah. I'd be curious like what that would look like. So if if anybody has any any of that, I would love to know Mm. like what that that feels like i i personally feel like death workers are kind of life workers but Mm. like to to label yourself as a life worker instead of a death worker like i i would be really curious to see how that would go yeah Yeah. (laughs) so i actually only have one question left which is like weirdly specific after all of the philosophical (laughs) talk um but like are there like any very like specific protection workings that you do um that you that that you kind of have to do because you work with death or is it just like the protection work that we would do otherwise too like if there maybe maybe there's like specific ways in which you protect yourself from like spirits of the dead maybe or yeah like before you go to a cemetery or something like that yes and i mean i i have obviously like all the regular protections but um for some, so this one comes to mind for some reason, and I guess it's a little morbid because, like, it does. I, I would say that it heeds on like protection from actual death, um, <laughs> and like it's not that intense, but like it, I do have protections in my car because I drive a lot. Like I really, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, even just to and from work and whatever. But when I'm like on road trips and stuff, I do have a uh, like an evil eye and a travel talisman that Marshall made me. But I think it's important to have, like, a car base, especially here in the U.S. Like, we, our public transit is basically non-existent. And if it is, it's garbage. That's just how it is. It sucks. So you're driving everywhere. And Mm. um, road rage, people are so stupid. Like, when they're driving, like, it's just, it's so bad. Um, People are not paying attention. People are being distracted by their kit. You know, like, it's like, you just have to be careful. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time, like, my evil eye... And people are also just, like, mad all the time. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, in this day and age, too, like, I get it. But also, like, don't road rage, chill. And so uh, I keep that evil eye specifically to, like, absorb road rage. Or, like, you know, when people, like, shoot me an evil eye of any... Mm-hmm. Or, like, just any, like, ill intention. Um, so say, like, you know, I didn't let them in because I didn't see them. Like, they sped past... I don't know. Like, Whatever. And they like shoot me an evil eye like i don't want that being absorbed into the car and like building up um so that's one of the things so like while it's not death work i do think that like it helps you know maybe just steer me away out of the out of the danger zone while i'm driving for the most part um cemeteries is a really big one so with cemeteries that i visit frequently that i know the spirits really well i don't really do a ton of protections um, I mean, sure, I'll wear, like, a protection, but it's just, like, a regular one. Whereas mm-hmm. if I'm visiting cemeteries that I've never been to, especially, or cemeteries that I don't know the spirits very well, I will absolutely always wear a head covering of some sort. Um, whether that's just, like, a big, nice, fluffy hat, or if it's, like, you know, a <laughs> bandana like this. Like, I want to cover my head. Um, and also, my hair's being weird. Or I'll wear like some kind of other protection but most of the time it's a head covering just because especially when you start becoming really good at communicating with spirits um they can get really chatty and while i'm a practitioner and i'm still an introvert (laughs) okay like i don't i don't want to be going into a cemetery and having like a ton of spirits being like hey like all at the same time i'm like one at a time please Uh, So head covering is definitely one of the the biggest helps. Let's see. I'm trying to think of any other ones. Um, Definitely pay your offerings, especially if you're going to a cemetery that you've never been to. The the cemetery guardians, not the spirits of the dead, but the cemetery guardians are always so skeptical. Like, if they know that you're coming in and they know that you are trying to communicate or work or do anything like you're not just there as a person to visit or whatever Mm. they're like 
you know, you can't just like come in without a payment if you want something from us. Um, so pay your offerings because that will make things go a lot smoother. I guess that's not really a protection, but it's definitely like a very good precursor if mm -hmm. you're going to do cemetery work. Um, I think that's it. Oh, uh, cleansing yourself after visiting cemeteries that you don't know or that you're not close with. Um, you know, you don't want any... So, spirits are bored, <laughs> man. Like, especially <laughs> if you go to a cemetery that is not visited often, they're like, I'm coming out with you. And you're like, mm -hmm. no, don't do that. You know, so <laughs> cleanse yourself at the car or wherever, like before, use a little Florida water or like, you know, however you want to do it. Just, just cleanse yourself. But that's about it. Like for the most part, it's really not. Um, I maybe I don't have like very good spiritual hygiene <laughs> with it. I don't know. But like I've never had really like, huge issues otherwise. As long as you just have those like very simple um, protections in the first place, I just don't like to clean up messes afterwards. So like yeah. just wear your head coverings if you're not sure. You know, just cleanse yourself if you're not sure. Like just do the thing so that you don't have to clean up a mess later. Mm. Trust me, it's annoying. Especially if the spirit's like annoying as hell. You're like, dude, <laughs> just <no>. stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. But I, I, um, I totally get it. I feel like if you go somewhere and uh, you try to approach something or someone, especially someone when it comes to spirits, with a lot of respect, then mm. most of the times nothing bad will happen. So then you yeah. don't have to clean up a mess afterwards. Right. And I mean, like it also, I guess if you're working with spirits of the dead, um, putting up your protections like in your space, in your home, if you don't want them in your house. Whereas like, as long as you're not causing any issues, like I don't really mind who comes through. Just mm -hmm. like, don't stay, don't overstay your welcome. Like, it's just like guests, right? Like, I don't mind if like people are like oh can i come over and you're like yeah sure whatever like you hang out and then you leave and whatever but like if you don't want that like put up your protections and cover you know like lock your mirrors and leave them at the door <laughs> yeah yeah like, you, you can yeah. come with me to my door but then here you have to stay outside yeah, get out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah so i think that's those are those are it i don't really have a okay. ton then that was actually the last question that I had. Uh, of course, uh, you already uh, knew it. At the end, I always ask for some good resources that doesn't necessarily have to be books, that can also be like websites with good info, reliable creators, um, anything like that, uh, where people can uh, read up or listen up <laughs> about this practice if they want to get into. Yeah, uh, so right now their name is Wicked Witch of LA on Instagram. It will change, so heed that. But um, right now it's Wicked Witch of LA. So they have a really close practice with uh, La Santa Muerte. So if you're curious in like learning more about that, um, they're a Mexican folk practitioner, incredible information. There is a podcast episode with them on there from the Red Text podcast by Rye and Voga. Fantastic people, awesome podcast. Yes. So like, just definitely get into that one. Um, for death practice, like I said, just in case you forgot, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Walking the Twilight Path by Michelle Be Bellinger, Bellinger, I think. Such a good book. It's not about like, working with spirits at all it's more about your personal relationship with death and like how you view it and how you interact with it um so that but it's a it's a very important piece let's see um books books if you're looking for spirits like specifically to work with death there is the book of seances by claire goodchild this one's a really good one for ancestor work for working with cemeteries spirits their graveyards communication divination like it's got all these different things in there um and it's really really good for like learning the history of either your genealogy or you know the people that you find in the cemetery that you just end up going to their grave and you're like i don't know i connect with you understanding 
how to even learn about that person. Cause you know, like that's kind of a hard thing to just be like, do I just Google their name? Um, but you know, sure. And then understanding how to go about that. There is uh, morbid magic by Tom, uh, Thomas Power. This one's a really cool one. Cause it's more like learning about death practices all around the world in different cultures. Oh, and that's then, cool. I actually have that at home. I should read that. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. Yeah. It's a good one. Um, and then last one, it's not particularly death, but I know that a lot of people have issues like understanding how to communicate with spirits. So again, Book of Seance is a good one, but also Consorting with Spirits uh, by Jason Miller. Fantastic book about how to understand how to actually like communicate with spirits. And <laughs> um, there's some good exercises in there as well. Let's see. I think I think those are... I think those are all. <laughs> I'm sure I have more, but like books are, I'm picky about my books now, you know, like I want something that's like really good, not just like a mediocre book. That sounds good for everyone else, but I'm picky about my books. It's just so saturated that it's, it's hard to get like really fucking good ones. Yeah. I think, I think those are all the ones for now, but um, those are fantastic. Check them out. Thank you so so much for letting me interview you this was like i feel like such a fun and also very very insightful interview i feel like this will be a great great help to a lot of people i hope so yeah thanks for interviewing me it was a lot of fun awesome then uh yeah i hope you have an awesome rest of your day because it's still very early <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right and uh to everyone else I will see you in the next video or interview. <laughs> Bye.